Good morning guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back to what I believe is the third vlog of the series. Today is, as you can probably already tell, because it's so bright, I think it looks really bright in the viewfinder, it's a very hot day here in the UK. I believe we're going to get highs of 25 and it feels like summer really has just come in, which is good and bad timing um, because if you watched my last video, you would have known that I alluded that I got some type of diagnosis, which means that I'm gonna be out bed bound for a minimum of six weeks, which has been a tough pill to swallow. But as promised, I'm going to go through in great detail my journey over the past two months, because I think it's been taking about two months with all the ins and outs with the doctors and so forth. I'm really breaking it down because as I said previously, I really wanna share my experience so that if somebody else is in my experience, they get the same diagnosis that they'll be able to come on the internet, type into YouTube if they so wish and not Google, because I'm not gonna lie, Google scared me a lot and made me feel very, very miserable. Um, but yeah, I hope that you'll be able to kind of come to this video and use it as kind of an information stroke, like see how you're feeling, my emotions, walk you through all of my emotions. Um, but yeah, today is gonna be very much a vlog in a day in a life with me. I think today, as it's so hot, I would love to get out in the garden. Um, I have just finished doing Pilates, coffee, a bit of journaling. I've come upstairs to kind of brush my teeth, wash my face, which is why you're seeing me completely fresh face, which is scary, but I'm just feeling the fear and doing it anyways. Little plug for a book that I read, which was amazing. Um, but yeah, no, I'm looking forward to kind of taking you on a day with me. I think today's haul will definitely obviously include a haul. I've got some new in bits from H&M. There are two items on there that literally are like Lueve dupes. There are amazing bags that could be worn now, but most definitely worn throughout in autumn and winter. And they're an amazing price. I think they're like 32 pounds, which I have to say like, if you're not here for the mark, like the chat about what's been going on from a doctor perspective, definitely skip through to the haul because there are some absolute gems there. And as always, I always make sure that my videos are bookmarked so you can jump straight through and skip pieces that you don't wanna see. Cause I feel like, you know, this is your world. You choose what you get to put into it. And I like to give people the choice to be able to kind of select what part of the video they wanna see. So, but I always do that. But yeah, so I think the next step is probably just to kind of get myself ready for the day, show you some of these items and yeah, and just talk you through what's been happening in my life. ready for the day i could not sh not show you joe cutting the grass like literally this right here is my love language every saturday i feel like this is not a, like a shameless plug for my husband because truth be told he does help me out so much more domestically wise than when we first met like nine years ago but yeah i still do a lot around the house but every week every saturday morning he cuts the grass and he's so good at it. Like he's into his lines, it looks so great. I feel like I'm not doing him a good service because you can't really see the lines because it's so bright. So let me see if I can show you this way. But um, yeah, he does the lines. I mean, it just looks amazing. Hopefully when I go downstairs, I'll show you a little bit more, but literally this is my love language and um, yeah, getting to see him do this every week really fills my cup. One of the most amazing things about our bedroom is that we have these bifold doors which open all the way through. So we get to literally lay in bed and look out into the garden. But yeah, it can't look out into the garden. You can't actually see the lines as I'd hoped. But yeah, he comes out every week every Saturday morning, cuts the grass so the garden looks lovely for the rest of the weekend. And yeah, I couldn't be happier with it. This makes me feel incredibly lucky to have, you know, just such a nice garden, but also a husband that does this. And, um, you know, when you're feeling really, really low, you have to look to every single positive element in your life just to really, really put your mind in the best space that it can be. So yeah, here he comes. Not only does he cut the grass, he does it with his top off, which is literally, honestly. 
<laughs> I just forget that I'm filming here that I've actually got to say something but yeah watching him pop off <laughs> It's honestly one of the best things. Now I'm dressed and ready for the day. I've just literally finished air wrapping my hair. And to be fair, this is the second day. So I air wrapped yesterday and it was a bit loose. You would have seen it this morning. And I've just gone over it quickly again. And I have to say, like, I'm actually quite impressed with how it looks on the se second day. But before we get into this haul, I wanted to show you this dress because I appreciate it. I did film for Ibiza, but because of all of the travel issues that we had, so we had scenario where we traveled to Cornwall and our train was abandoned mid-trip and we had to get a two-hour taxi which was super expensive all the way to Cornwall. We then flew from Cornwall to Zurich, our bags got lost in Zurich and then we flew to Ibiza and it was just and then Joe was unwell and it was just one of those trips where there was one thing after another that I just didn't you know of the time that we finally did get which was nice I just didn't want to pick up my camera. But this is one of the dresses that I wore. And I wore this to Hostel La Torre, which is an amazing sunset view restaurant in San Antonio. If you're ever going, it is stunning. It's an amazing place to get engaged. In fact, Joe had um, an art, a music artist round was it yesterday. Um, and he chose to propose to his, his fiance there, which is amazing. But yeah, this dress is chef's kiss i am absolutely in love with this dress and i thought to myself seeing as i probably won't be wearing it over the next six weeks because of my operation i want to share this with you guys because then if you've got a holiday you're going to walk going for or a special occasion that you're looking for a dress then this is the dress to buy this is from pretty lavish i'll make sure i link down below i've got this in a size eight but i just love it because it's very very comfortable it's double lined down below so it's not see-through i love this kind of spanish-esque flamenco kind of neck it's very subtle along the bust line which makes it super cute but also still sexy i obviously love the cutout at the side i find that this is really really sexy now you can pull this really high up and it still looks great. But I also love the fact that you can pull this literally just above your bum line, which makes it look really, really kind of inviting, even more sexy. So let me just pop on a pair of heels so I can show you what it looks like with the heels. But honestly, I cannot remember off the top of my mind how expensive this dress is. Cause as I say, I've got this a good few weeks ago. Um, but I think it was around the 50 pounds mark. And 100% it is worth every single penny. I love the way that it kind of hits my ankles. I'm five foot seven, so it might hit a little bit lower if you're a bit shorter, but literally the sexiest, most comfortable, flattering dress. I just had to show you guys because I want you guys to have the best summer. And um, as I say, like I said last, last week, if you are buying any of these items, I would so appreciate if you send me a picture of you guys wearing these items, especially if you're on holiday and enjoying yourself, because I will be living vicariously for you guys whilst I'm on bed rest and having my operation and so forth. But yeah, this is a beautiful dress and I'll make sure that I link below. Now there is definitely a slightly different theme for this haul where I have been buying a lot of summer outfits recently prior to my diagnosis purely because I thought I'm going to be experiencing summer, I want to wear summer outfits. But actually, because I probably will be in bed recovering for a lot of the rest of the summer, I have just been buying some items that could necessarily work for the back end of summer, especially going into autumn. Um, so I bought this crop jacket. Now, the thing about this jacket, I feel like trenches are absolute classics. Like they're always going to be in fashion. They come in every single year, the long ones, the cropped ones. And I think given the way the weather is in the UK, the weather isn't always very good. Um, so you do kind of need a light jacket. So this is why I decided to buy this jacket. Now this is a crop jacket. This is what it looks like with the kind of sleeves all pulled down. It doesn't have the most amount of shape. But what I like to do, to do is kind of pull it up onto the elbows to give it that bit of a boxy shape and wear it like this. Now I'm wearing a H&M dress underneath, which is, is an absolute steal. I had this in the last video, and if you didn't see that, I'll make sure I link just above, either there or there, I don't know. Um, but yeah, a really, really cheap um, H&M dress, which is super cute. But then I bought this crop jacket, which is stunning. I just love the colors of it. I love the fact it's lightweight. I love that you can just throw it off of anything. I also think that you can wear this in autumn, especially if you're wearing ju a jumper. It is very big and billowy, so you could probably put a jumper easily underneath this. But yeah, I just really like the way this looks. It's very casual. I feel like you can wear this to the office, to brunches, everywhere. It's very, very versatile. And the price of this, I think, is about £30. So it's a really, really good price. 
I got this in a size small and I have to correct myself because the dress before I said it was a size eight, but it's not, they didn't do size eights. It was a size small, but yeah, I love, really love how this looks. And I think if I wear it like this, I feel like I'd even wear this to the office. Like if I'm not going for client meetings and just running into the office and do some work and see some friends afterwards, I really feel like this is a really cute outfit and would be great for summer. But yeah, definitely keeping this jacket. It's a classic sable and I don't have one in my wardrobe. So I feel like for this price point is a really, really good item to keep. Now on the same trend of wanting to buy items that are gonna take me through to winter, I have two bags, which are absolutely stunning. I have to say when I bought these two bags because of the same bag, the same colorway let me just show you because they are the same bag or the same colorway i didn't think that i would end up keeping both but the reason i first put this in my basket was for this bag because i saw um, a loewe bag that looked really similar if i can find a picture i'll definitely put it on this video but i saw a really similar loewe bag god knows i didn't actually look at the price because i just saw it and i loved it and i thought you know it's gonna be super expensive don't look nice because then you'll be trying to find reasons why it should be in your wardrobe but I saw this on H&M for $32.99. I was like, oh my God, I have to get this. And I feel like this is a bag that I would definitely wear much more casually thrown in like my books and stuff, traveling to work. And then when I saw this top color, well, look, I mean, look at the house. You guys know how parts of my house look. You know, we, I'm a bit of a beige girl. I do like the colors. So I feel like a top is something that would be in my wardrobe and would blend very, very easily. And then I absolutely love the maroon. Now, let me just quickly show you some of my maroon shoes. This is with my maroon shoes. Now, I'm not saying this is the outfit that I would wear, but I mean, literally just look how cute do these maroon shoes look. I feel like I'd be wearing these with a whole trouser outfit, this bag, but it's like just really, really soft. I doubt it's obviously leather because of the price point, but it's super soft. It's got a magnetic clasp. So when you're traveling on the tube, it's gonna be very much closed, especially if it's under your shoulder. So no one can just kind of get into it, but I just love the shape of it. And for the price, yeah, I had to get it. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Which is the color that you would go for? Would you go for the taut color? Or would you go for the maroon? What do you think? Should I keep both? I feel like for the price point, I should definitely keep both. I definitely think I will get wear out of both of them. But as always, I really want your advice. Let me know in the comments what you think. Now, my next item is this beautiful cable knit cardigan from H&M and it is for the stunning price of $18.99. I'm not gonna lie, I don't really need another cardigan in my wardrobe. But when I saw that it was cable knit, I don't have that and the price point of $18.99 and it's short sleeves. I thought, you know what, why not pop it in and see what it looks like? Now I've just teamed this up with a pair of linen crop trousers that I've got from H&M. I'm also wearing a pair of heels just to elevate it, but I feel like this jumper could be used in so many different ways. It can actually be used as a proper cardigan to kind of throw over kind of those real nice summer dresses and just something to kind of keep you a little bit warm in those evenings, especially in the UK when it gets a little bit chillier. But I also just love how this looks as a top. Now I have actually got a lot of these cropped cardigans and I wear them as a top. And I just think it looks really, really nice. They're really easy to wear. It's really, really loose. I obviously haven't done it all the way up because I want that kind of relaxed fit. But I thought, you know, let's show you what it looks like done all the way up. I feel like these can be worn as a tops and they work really, really well. And for 18 99 it's actually a still. Now I've done it all the way up to the top. For me, that's just a little bit too prim and proper. So I do really like the fact that you can just do it under over here. There's a cheeky little bit of boob if you want to see it, but ultimately this is how I'd wear it. I love how this looks. And yeah, this is a type of item that will take you throughout all the seasons. Obviously you can wear it in spring and summer if it's not too warm, but most importantly, you can wear this in autumn and winter. You can wear it for kind of, you know, casual trousers, casual jeans, but also smart trousers like you've got here. Like this is a perfect outfit to wear. So your office, you can still have client meetings, but you could also still go for like midweek dinners and drinks with your friends and this will still look really nice. So yeah, I got this in a size small. I'll make sure I'll link below, but definitely keeping this item too. And once again, definitely still on the trend of treating cardigans like a top. This is like a jersey cardigan, so it's a definitely a totally different feel, but I love the gold buttons that they've got running down the middle, and I love the gold buttons on the false pockets as well. Now these are popper buttons, which makes it really, really nice and easy. The material is actually not as warm and as a knit cardigan before, as you would expect, because obviously that's knitwear, and this is jersey, so I quite like the material of this. It's stretchy, um, and I actually bought this thinking that I would definitely wear this with black, and obviously I would, but given it's still summer i thought i'd show you what it looks like now 
I'm not sure if this is black or whether this is navy. I don't know, like, let me bring it up to the camera. I think it's navy, like a really dark navy, which means it can work well with the black. But I really like how this looks with the linen. I feel like as a summer look, it's quite elevated. I feel like it will carry you into autumn. And once again, like this is an item that you could wear casually, but also smartly into work. I feel like you could put just like a very simple vest top underneath. So you could always take it off if you want to kind of be a little bit cooler. I actually really like the way this looks. And once again, this is just a great outfit. And so this top itself is $18.99, very similar to the price point of the previous cardigan. Two items that are just great prices to go into your wardrobe, look a bit different. You know, you can literally put this on, feel very smart, put together. Um, and I absolutely love the way this one looks too. But that signifies the end of today's haul. I did have one last item, but I feel like I'll probably wear it at some point throughout this today's video, so you'll be able to see it then. But yeah, really love how these look, but I'm gonna get ready for the day. As I say, it's quite a hot day today, so I cannot be wearing this while I was sitting down with you guys. I'm gonna get ready for the day, probably get myself a coffee, and I'm gonna take a seat and talk you through some of the things that's been happening with me over the past couple of months. I hope you guys enjoyed that haul because I did, but I have to say I was super, super hot there. Um, I thought I'd just come and sit here. Let me see if I can vicariously balance you on what is my Stanley cup and a candle. Like, I feel like this is a recipe for disaster, but I thought it would be good just to come and sit down and film this section of the video in a comfortable space, which is our living room. I feel like I haven't shown you our living room before, um, but it's decorated with complete like natural materials, natural colors. But obviously you would have just seen just then like a massive window that looks out onto the garden. So surrounded by nature effectively. Um, so I thought this would be a good space to do this video because I feel like this is probably the most vulnerable I've ever been on a video, especially on the internet. And I suppose in general really, because never really had this kind of health issue um so as i said like feel free to speak through if this isn't the kind of content that you want to see maybe not the happiest of content but it's real life and i thought for those of you that might be searching fibroids or myonectomy that this would bring you to this video and could talk you through basically my experience so i am 38 female um, and I've had the copper coil for the majority of my life. I think I've had the copper coil in for, I don't know, must've been at least like 11, 12 years. Um, and obviously as you grow up, especially when you're like turning your teenage years, everyone always tells you always, you know, use contraception because you're gonna get pregnant, like just like that, you know, they proper scare you. So I've obviously always had that until we, Joe and I were ready to, to have kids, we thought we'll take that out. But anyways, with having the copper coil, I opted for the copper coil purely because hormonal treatment, whether that be in a pill, an implant, a coil, just didn't work with my body. I couldn't regulate my hormones and it just, you know, it didn't make me feel very good inside and not the best person. So that's why I've always had a copper coil. But one of those things of having a copper coil means that you have you can do as one of the side effects have an incredibly heavy period and that is something that i can't believe i'm talking about my period on the internet but that is something i've had throughout you know the last decade it's not new i went to doctors after having the coil to say that i have very very heavy periods and they always just brush me off to say well that's just one of the side effects so i always just saw that as one of the the side effects it's one of those things where it's like i'm happy that i've got protection I can't use the other forms of contraception, so therefore, this is just one of those things. And throughout the years, they have got heavier. Um, but I also found that after having a smear test back in March, that I had like really weird side effects down there, like constant liquid. So I'd either be on my period all the time, or a, like a lighter form of my period, or I would just have fluid, like fluid all the time. and. I'm really fortunate to have healthcare, private healthcare. For those of you that aren't in the UK, are watching the US, we're really fortunate in the UK to have a national health system, which means that everyone has access to healthcare. Um, sadly, it has 
not been as good as it always had been because there's just so many lack of resources, funding, and obviously with COVID, a lot of wait times have come still off the back of that. And fortunately, I have private healthcare through my job, thank God. And um, so I've always used the, the doctor system through that way to be able to get a GP appointment very, very quickly. Now, interestingly, even with all these symptoms, even with the doctor, the specific private doctor saying, you need to go for more tests, my private healthcare was really reluctant to let me go for private health, uh, private tests, saying they wouldn't cover it, purely because as part of the history when the doctors go through it, they were saying, you know, what my form of contraception is. So they try to use the fact that it's contraception as an issue not to go for these tests, whereas what my doctor was really concerned about, that there was kind of real sinister um, symptoms here that needed further looking. So after six weeks and a lot of quarreling with my private healthcare, I managed to get a gynecologist at, um, consult, consultant appointment. And straight away she said, you know, what your symptoms you're experiencing is, is not normal. And let's just run some blood tests and so forth. Now, increasingly over the past few months, I've been getting like severe bloating, like painful bloating, like Everyone, and I feel like lots of people get bloating, but this is like to the point where it's super painful, like double over bloating. Um, and I'd find that would happen. I hadn't really linked it to my cycle or anything at all, um, but it would always happen for about four or five days. And Joe will always say, look, you know, sometimes when you're stressed, you've got big meetings at work, that's just, you know, stress manifesting in a physical way. And I tried to write that off, but like, as the months went on and on, I was like, this is just not normal. And in, and in addition to that, something that I hadn't realized until I got my dog, no, I noticed that I found that sometimes when I'd run on a treadmill, I'd feel like pressure, like pressure in my kind of pelvic womb area. So like every time I took a footstep, I'd feel like a pull on one side inside like my stomach womb area. It's really hard to describe. Um, but that was something I was aware of, but didn't really link it to the fact that, you know, I was having all this fluid and yeah. Um, I mean, truth be told, I probably just blinkered my eyes a little bit because I didn't want to have to think about myself as being unwell, if you get what I mean. It's very scary. I lost my mum at a really young age. I lost her when I was 22. She would have been, how old would she have been? She would have been 53, I think it was. So quite a young age. And so, I have always had that in the back of my mind. I've lost my dad at 64 too. Um, so I always like, you know, my brother and I are always doing stuff which is geared towards longevity, which is why, you know, I'm into my health, I'm into what I'm eating and exercise and so forth. Long story short, I had a blood test and then I had an ultrasound before I went on holiday. And in my ultrasound, they said that they saw some fibroids. I did ask. Um, it wasn't something that they gave me information straight away and I decided to say oh what do they look like are they quite you know are they big or and she said they were substantial and didn't say anything else and then I asked for more information she said no I you're gonna have to wait until you see your doctor and she'll give you more feedback there so I kind of went away on holiday kind of thinking that there might be something that I needed to work on um and you know I did have a little bit of a google was kind of like there was so much information that I just stopped I thought you know what just deal with it once you get back from holiday and then I had my appointment with my doctor and I have to say that was the most like for me on from a personal perspective I've had lots of moments which has changed my life when my mum passed when my dad passed when you know um someone robbed money from us like all these different things when we were, when we were broken into twice like all these different traumatic things have like changed within a minute but this one here completely rocked me because i generally thought that maybe there would be something really easy simple whether that be a tablet or something so she basically said that i had fibroids um they one of them in particular looked like it had grown quite quickly um it was basically a size of an orange so one of my fibroids is about that big inside me which like you see my frame to think about something like this inside me is just crazy and now i had two others which were substantial size but not as big as the other one but the biggest concern there was that it was protruding it was sitting in my uterus lining it was protruding into my womb cavity and it was also pushing against one of my fallopian tubes which is why there was a liquid build up which basically couldn't get out so she gave me three options 
first option, she hit me with it hard and fast, was to have a hysterectomy, which, I mean, what, like, put it this way, I came into the appointment thinking I would have, like, some form of, I don't know, medication, like, three weeks of medication or something, and the first thing she said was hysterectomy, and so, yeah, I was thankfully sitting on the seat, but I felt like I could have fallen off the seat, <laughs> And um, so obviously that's not an option that I wanted to go down for. One, I do want to have, be able to have children. And two, you know, there are things where if you have a hysterectomy, it can push you into early menopause, all these different things. So obviously that wasn't an option that in my head was even an option. The second option was to just leave it, see how they go, monitor if they grow quicker, which given that I, you know, my mum, she died of sepsis, not cancer, but she battled with cancer prior to it. Um, we have a long history of cancer in my family. Um, uh, my mum is one of 11 uh, brothers and sisters. So obviously the, the trends being that there's so many of them is going to be higher. But obviously there's a lot of cancer in my family. So it's not something I really want to just leave unmonitored. Um, but also most importantly, if we tried to get pregnant, it meant that I would, if it came, if my ov my egg came from the left ovary, that I had a very strong chance that I'd have an ectopic pregnancy because it wouldn't be able to get, the fertilised egg would not be able to get out of the fallopian tube if it was indeed fertilised there. And then if I was lucky enough, because you don't get to choose where your egg comes from, whether it's the right or the left ovary, if it's lucky enough for it to come from the right, because of, they don't know how it's the fibroid is interacting with my lining they don't know whether it would latch properly to actually you know continue full pregnancy and not terminate at that point or whether as and when it got bigger whether or not it would mean that I would have a late termination which is obviously everyone's nightmare or an early delivery which once again is everyone's nightmare early delivery when your baby's not fully formed so once again option two not looking great <laughs> Um, I'm laughing, I feel like there's nothing to laugh, but I'm laughing because it's just, a, I suppose, a weird coping mechanism of me getting through it. But then the third and final option, which is the option that I have chosen to go down to, is to have an operation called an open myectomy. Um, it can't be done by a keyhole because apparently my fibroids are so large. Um, but what it means is means I would have a full, um, a bit like a cesarean a cut in the bikini line where it'd go through all seven layers, I believe. Um, like when you have a c-section but they would gently gently move every fibroid out so that hopefully what that would mean they would leave my depending on how it's interacting with my room they may not have to stitch my room up but if it is they'd stitch it up so it could try and leave everything intact and most importantly all the symptoms that I've been feeling down there would then be relieved which would be great but most importantly be able to have you know potentially have a child problem free problem free at 38 um, but yeah so those are the options and obviously from there they do a run a biopsy on on, on those tumors to see you know, they are meant to be benign tumors so that is what I'm going with and that's what I'm saying every single time every time I speak to someone but they'll run some te tests just to make sure that it is so god you know god willing god hoping that that will all be fine um so that was the third option available to me. Obviously, couldn't make that decision straight away. Was really just unprepared to get that type of information. I think one of the biggest thing about having like a big operation is that she said, you know, it's a six week bed rest recovery. She said, it's masked. So it might be like a cesarean cut. The actual recovery time is so much longer uh, because of all the different decisions that they have to make in my uterus um, and that it would be bed rest, you know, I was like, okay, six weeks, does that mean I could, I'm surely I can go back to work in four weeks, you know, even if that is my laptop in bed, just typing my laptop, and she was just like really stern faced and was like, nope, nope, absolutely not, and then I was like, how about like walking, surely I can go and walk, you know, I love to walk, and she's like, nope, other than walking to the toilet, walking around the room, no, and I was like, Pilates, <laughs> weights, <laughs> And it was when I dawned on me that my like my summer is over. I was like, oh my god, summer is finished, and wasn't prepared for this. All my holidays need to be cancelled and so forth. And um, yeah, was definitely not prepared for it. But like after I came home, definitely had a big cry. I had my friends around me and people to talk to and Joe to talk to. 
obviously the third option was the right option i since have had an mri scan which was to see basically what the blood flow is like on the fibroids and since that mri scan they have found further three more fibroids um that are on my back wall so you know they are causing pressure on my like fallopian tubes on my womb um on my bladder on my colon so all of these have like major effects on my digestion system and what was so ironic was that prior to all of this i just thought maybe i had some food intolerances and i had actually taken a food intolerance test which had come back with 100 percent you know intolerable to cow's milk and lower percentages but intolerable to kind of wheat and egg whites and i think it was potentially yeast or yeah yeast and so interestingly i've cut that out because obviously if i'm going into an operation i want to go into the operation as healthy as can be so i've cut all of those foods out um i've decided not to drink i just like i am 100 percent so so scared to be going into this operation like my mum went into an operation and she never survived so that is definitely playing havoc with my mind i'm obviously a lot younger than my mum um, I like to think that I'm healthy, I have healthy activities, but you know, your girl does like to drink, um, not heavily, but you know, like have drinks with friends, and so I don't think I'm like teetotal, so I'm not like teetotal healthy, I do have pizza, and I have only just recently started on this kind of non-processed, ultra-processed food diet since the start of this year, um, yeah, and just like life, but I am keeping extremely positive as can be, and yeah, I'm just going to this a lot of way. You may have noticed that I have a new ring on my finger, which is the Aura ring, um, which I have had for about a week now. And then my reasoning for it was because I wanted to track what is my baseline, like what do I do now? Like how many steps do I do? What's my heart rate like? What's my heart rate variability? What's my breathing in like? Because I want to use that to track my recovery. But I will go into that in a lot more detail. I'm conscious I'm looking at the time and I've been chatting for 16 minutes. And I know that that's not always the most exciting way to have um, conversations on YouTube. But I feel like it's really important just to share what's going on with me. And I will be taking you guys through it. Obviously, six weeks off. Um, potentially, depending if the operation doesn't go very well, could mean that six weeks of no YouTube. Um, I'm actually going to get someone who's going to edit, so I can film, um, but I'm going to get someone to edit my videos because obviously I won't be able to kind of sit over a laptop or anything like that. Um, but I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to show you some form of my recovery. But I think the plan is, obviously, this is just like my information now. Um, it has been two weeks since the diagnosis so I've been able to like process it a lot although like still this week I had a real big cry because that's um I've been having my pre different pre-op assessments and calls and so it's feeling more and more real I am going to be having surgery in about a week and a half's time um so some of these will be staged you'll be able to see them as it goes through but I think next week probably what I will do when I'm getting my hospital bag together the room already the house already things I'm going to put a, together just a vlog of me basically chatting about the things I've done prior in the run up to my operation to get my body ready the things that I'm planning to do during this incredibly long time of like not being able to do anything go on holiday or anything like that you know basically see anyone and the things that I'm gonna like I'm gonna use this time to do other things I would never have chance to do um, and I've already got two things in plans, which I think you guys are going to be excited to see because it's like a transformation. I'm going to test some products, see whether or not it does transform and so forth. Um, but I will leave that all to the next video because I appreciate I've been talking a lot. But um, yeah, for those of you that are still here watching and going to continue watching this with me and anyone that comes across this video just because they've just been given the same diagnosis, know that my heart is so with you and I know all the emotions that you have probably already felt and are going to feel and i am trying and i hope to give a transparent experience on how everything is even if that's just me writing a journal just trying to be as real as possible here but you know i do live my life by being positive and looking for the positive in absolutely everything so i'm grateful that this has been spotted before having a child because i do not want to you know put myself in a situation where i may have an ectopic pregnancy a late termination or an early delivery so i'm grateful for that i'm grateful to god for that um and there are i always think like in these 
down times there are so much things to learn but i will speak more on this in the next video but just wanted to share why i've not been around and that the format of these videos is going to be a bit different there isn't going to be a haul guys for a good few weeks um oh my god today's haul may indeed be the last haul no there's probably gonna be a haul next week because i'm gonna buy some new pajamas and whatnot and stuff ready for my hospital bag and for the next six weeks but um yeah i just you know i love you guys i love the support that you guys always show me and i like the kind of two-way communications that we've got going and um it's a strange old thing this place the internet um but it is so nice to meet so many lovely people throughout and um yeah that is just life <laughs> that is what life has been but what are we going to do for the rest of the day i am thinking it's really lovely outside so i'm probably going to go either to the garden center or get some lunch or do some cooking not too sure but what i do know is i will 100 percent be taking you with me and um yeah let me know what you think of the, the the living room this is like obviously the first time you've seen the living room this is like my little safe haven um yeah it's been designed with trying to be very natural very calm and i feel like we've achieved that we've got some black and white pictures in our art but actual pictures of things that we've done in life like little memories but um yeah maybe one day i'll show you guys a bit more some of the interiors of this room but yeah let's get ready to seize the day and um see what else we've got in store <laughs> guys i don't know how much i got to show you of the rest of the day yesterday i feel like i was a bit of a bad blogger and that we got a lot of plants we also did the gardening now i did rope joe into doing the gardening with me and um it's one of those things i don't know if any of you guys have the same like joe always says that i'll say we're going somewhere and then if he's in a good mood i'll add somewhere else on so we went to the garden center and he was in a good mood. So we went to another garden centre. <laughs> and then when we got back, I started doing digging round by the tree. And because the weather's been so good lately, um, the ground was really, really hard. And so obviously using male strength is a lot easier. And so I kind of roped him into that. But ultimately, three hours later, he'd been helping me with the gardening. We'd run out of compost. I don't know if I showed you, but we didn't buy enough compost. So he went out and got me two upper bags. Honestly, he was like the best guy. Like he was such a house husband. <laughs> um, 
yesterday but um yeah so it was like a a lot busier i'm not too sure if i got my camera out for much i'll show you some of the bits that i did around the garden um today but um i thought i'd just jump on here because this morning i've just finished doing a pilates class now I think I've said on the channel before that I do Pilates with um, by Bryony and if you don't follow her 100% you need to follow her because her energy is, is truly truly amazing um, she's just a beautiful she's just a beautiful bundle of like positivity and calm and um, yes yeah, very very inspiring lady and um, yeah so I am part of this founders group which is just a group of members who kind of actively do Bryony a lot and had applied and um, I just had the best morning um, I had a really you know obviously I went for a really lovely walk this morning because the weather as you can probably see is just so nice and um, went for a really nice early morning walk so it wasn't too hot with Lulu and I don't know I just felt like a shift today I felt like it was just a really nice start to the day and I've been obviously feeling so glum and so low about some of the things that are gonna be happening in the next few weeks. And um, came back, I did like a full half an hour Pilates session live um, with a load of ladies that I've had the chance to meet over this year. You know, like literally met so many new ladies who like doing the same types of things um, over this year. And I just, yeah, I'm really grateful for that this year. I'm really grateful to be coming into like my own and knowing like what is good for me what fills my cup effectively and also meeting like-minded individuals that like to do the same kinds of things of, as me um and yeah so after that and we just had like an hour catch up live live session hour catch up and it was just really nice and i think moments like that especially as you get older are oh, so much more rarer isn't it? i feel like when you're younger you you know there's opportunities to meet people so much more but actually as you get older, um, you know, your your circles become, you know, surrounded around whether that be work and, and friends that you've grown up with and you don't really go out out um, as much as you're younger. So, yeah, I just feel really grateful to have met individuals and everyone's got inspiring stories and we're really supportive to everyone. And it's just, um, yeah, it just was just one of those beautiful, beautiful mornings. But let me just show you some of the stuff in the garden. Um, I appreciate I've never really shown you the garden yet, so it's so hot. We've all got the doors completely open. As I say, I got to do the Pilates with the doors open, looking out to the sky. And I'll show you. I mean, look at this sky. Completely blue skies. Here are some of our handiwork. Now... I do think I actually have not got enough compost here. Um, so I'm potentially going to go and buy some more and just raise this up because I like to be able to see, like, I like to be able to see the flowers at the top, not down the bottom. Um, and I kind of have that issue over here. So if I walk to the other end of the garden, um, I planted these plants with uh, two other gardeners and it took us a couple of days. So here's one of the, of the other pots that I've got here. Um, but because they're so low down, it just kind of means that like you don't really get to see the flowers so well as well. So I'd love them to kind of raise that up. So I think I'm actually going to put that on a to-do list to raise this bed up. Because as you can see here, these beds are much more raised. Now, these plants were planted um, a year ago. So they're like, they're, I feel like they're quite mature. I feel like I could be better at feeding. I've got some of my kind of dead i say dead but old alliums which were stunning this year but i'm leaving them in as long as possible because i want to be able to shake the seeds or let the seeds blow with the wind and hopefully there'll be more alliums from the self seeds um but yeah just to kind of show you some of the things that i got i got like a mixed variety of flowers here because i really want these to basically trail down the side for a bit of color and then i've got thyme which obviously i cook with loads and obviously it being right by the kitchen means that I can easily come and get time and I've got some rosemary here as well and this is all flower white as well but I just really wanted an injection of color um and yeah this is like a work in progress like obviously fitting out a house is super expensive like I buy something every month and Joe's like you need to stop buying things um but I obviously want to make this area even more beautiful and I feel like I'm grateful for this because if I do manage to get downstairs five weeks into my surgery 
I know that I'll be grateful just to be able to sit out here and just have coffee, um, even if it means I have to go in like really, really shortly. But, but yeah, I feel like this has definitely been a longer video today, purely because I know that I would have been chatting to you for some time about my upcoming operation. Um, and so I obviously don't want to make this too long, but if you made it to the end, thank you very much. And as always, your support is just honestly, <laughs> just it fills my cup seriously does but um i think i'm probably going to end the video here um i've got some friends coming over i've got my goddaughter who is 18 i can't believe she's 18 coming over so i'm just going to make um a birthday cake and whatnot and get the house ready so i think right now is probably the best place to leave it but as i say i look forward to catching up with you guys next week i will be doing a full brief on like how i get myself ready for this operation um, hospital bag, things that I'm packing in my bedroom so that they're like really easy there and things that are going to get me through, um, the books that I've bought, the things that I'm going to read and also the programs that I'm going to watch um, and just basically what I kind of am visualising and manifesting for myself in this kind of six weeks off but yeah thank you again so much for watching, um, I love you all and I look forward to catching up with you soon, take care guys, bye.